Welcome to Eggheads, the show where a team of five quiz challengers pit their wits against possibly the greatest quiz team in Britain. They are the Eggheads. No possibly about it, is there? No. <laughs> Eggs? No. Come on. It's no. a dead cert. Are you feeling the force? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, feel Excellent. Feel Hoping to get one over on our quiz champions today are over and out. Now, this team are all members of St Albans Cricket Club. Let's meet them. Hi, I'm Andy. I'm the managing director of a PR company. I'm Nick. And I'm a chemistry teacher. Hi, I'm Johnny, and I'm a master's student in politics. Hi, I'm Andy, I'm a project and program manager. I'm Toby, and I'm a data analyst. So, Andy, team, welcome. Great to see you. Hello. Hello. Hi. It's a cricket club that brings you together, Andy, is it? It is, yeah. We all play cricket together. And there's something about a drop catch in there, is that right? <laughs> yeah, I'm unfortunately the back-to-back -back, uh, uh, recipient of the Drop Catch of the Year award for St Albans Cricket Club. So they, they work out which was the one that you maybe should have collected? Uh, there wasn't much choice. I, think. <laughs> I, was, I, was a, I was a clear winner. <laughs> and how is it then, the cricket? Is it, is it very competitive or just leisurely or what? No, it's pretty competitive. We, we run five teams on a Saturday and two teams on a Sunday and we play league cricket, we play friendly cricket. So we've got a big youth section. We, you know, we really cover most bases when it comes to the, uh, to the cricket. And the two Andes have quizzed before here? Yeah, we've done a little bit of you know, pub quizzing before. Right, OK. Good luck. Every day there is a £1,000 worth of cash up for grabs for our challengers. However, if they fail to defeat the Eggheads, the prize money rolls over to the next show. So, over and out, I can tell you that the Eggheads are... I think we could call it a roll now, officially. They are on a roll. They've won six on the trot. That's good news for you in the sense that it means that £7,000 is on the table today. Bad news in, that they're in good form, but let's not worry about that. You can take them down, I'm sure. Are you ready to try? We're ready, yeah. definitely. OK, yeah. first head-to-head -head battle is on arts and books. <laughs> and you can choose from Judith, Dave, Kevin, Barry and Lisa. Arts and books. I would suggest that you go for Barry <laughs> and you go for it. OK. Yeah. Yeah. Should we do that? Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Andy. I think we're going to go for Barry. Yes. And I'm going to OK, the team captain, Andy, goes in. Arts and books, the subject. And it's Barry, the brain, <laughs> who'll be in the question room as well. Please, gentlemen, go there now. Andy, I gather you had a really interesting musical job. Uh, well, I run a PR company now in the music industry, but for many years I worked in the record industry. I worked uh, throughout the 90s at Creation Records, Home of Oasis and Primal Scream and various other people. Great, so you saw Oasis come up in the, the incredible way that they did. I did, I fought the Britpop Wars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that was... There's been nothing like that probably since the... Oh, I was going to say the Beatles, but maybe T-Rex and all that would have been similar, but it's, it's unusual to have that level of hysteria, isn't it? Yeah, it was, it was quite a remarkable time, I think. I think they worked out at one point that one in 12 people in the country bought What's the Story, Morning Glory, their second album. It's a, it was a, an astonishing time. All right, good luck in this round, Andy. Arts and books and your choice. Do you want to go first or second? I'll go first. So here's your question, Andy. Good luck. Which of these novels is set during World War I? The Quiet American, Birdsong or Catch-22? Mm, well, it's not Catch-22, because that's uh, in the Second World War. Uh, the Quiet American, I don't know. I do know that the answer is Birdsong, which is set in the First World War. Birdsong is correct, yeah. Got a point. Over to Barry. How are you, Barry? Well, thank you. You're an Oasis fan? Yes, yes. I, uh... I didn't, buy the, I didn't buy that album, though, but uh, I've probably listened to every track on it many times. Yeah, it's good. Which Shakespeare character was the Prince of Tyre? Barry, was it Cymbeline, Pericles or Othello? Well, Othello was from Cyprus and Cymbeline was an English, a British king, so it was Pericles, Prince of Tyre. Pericles is right. One each. Back to you, Andy. Who is the central character of the E.M. Forster book, A Room with a View? Adela... Quested, Margaret Schlegel, or Lucy Honeychurch? I have to say I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm aware of the book. I haven't read it. Um, it's going to be a complete guess. I'm going to say uh, Lucy Honeychurch. <laughs> is he right, Barry? He's absolutely right. That's right. Lucy Honeychurch is the right answer, Andy. Well done. Going well. Two out of two for our challenger. Barry, how many lines are there in each verse of the Rudyard Kipling poem, if... Ooh. Two, four, or eight? It's not two. It must be eight. 
Eight is correct. <laughs> <laughs> it's the sort of one you can come on and done on, isn't it? <laughs> it's easily that. Yeah. <laughs> Andy, to increase the pressure on our egg and let's see if that shell gives way. Who painted New Couché, or Reclining Nude, which was sold for $170 million in 2015? Is this Pietro Anigoni, Amadeo Modigliani, or Giacomo Balla? The only one I've heard of is Modigliani. Um, I don't know the other two. I'm going to say Modigliani. Wouldn't he be amazed if he knew his work had gone for that amount of money? I always think Modigliani is the right answer. Well done. Amadeo Modigliani, three out of three. OK, they've started very well. Let's see if Barry can stay in there. Your question, which Stephen Karam play set in a New York apartment won the 2016 Tony Award for best play. Barry, was it The Humans, Eclipsed, or The Father? Ah, uh, I miss this. I really don't know on this one at all. I'm sorry to say I haven't heard of any of those plays, so it's going to be an absolute guess. I'll go for The Father. The Father. Let's see challenges, do you know? The yep. Humans is the only thing that... Yeah, Andy, right. Andy's got it on, on this side. The Humans is the answer, oh. Barry. <laughs> Well done, Andy. That's good. Good stroke for your team. That's not a drop catch at all there, is it? Um, I'm You're thrilled. going to be in the final <laughs> round. You've knocked out Barry, the brain. Please come back to us and we'll see what the next round holds. We had a, an interesting passing reference to Othello in that round. And Barry, you said he was from Cyprus. Yes, I, I might have got that wrong. The, the play is set in Cyprus, but the subtitle of the play is Othello, Moor of Venice. The so more it might of... well be Venetian. Yes, that's right. So there's the Moor of Venice and it's set in Cyprus. So there's all kinds of different, different things going on there. As it stands, over and out, have not lost the brain. Done really well here. The eggheads have lost Barry. And the next subject for you is science. Who would like this? I think that's you, me. Andy, isn't yeah, it? sure. Yeah, I think that's, that's going to be me, Jeremy. Okay, Andy, against which egghead, and it can't be Barry. Judith. Um, Judith, please. Okay, very good. You like your science? Quite. If it's birds and bees, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, botany <laughs> rather than the periodic table. Oh, oh, the periodic table. Yes, <laughs> my nemesis, that is. <laughs> so Andy from Over and Out is playing Judith on science from the eggheads. Please now go to our legendary question room. Well, Judith, it is very wide science, isn't it? A huge, yes. I we go stars from the and... birds and the bees to stars. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, there we are, Andy. Would you like to go first or second on science? Uh, first, please, Jeremy. And here we go. Which of these animals often live for more than 50 years in the wild? Lion, African elephant or giraffe? Um... I don't think it's a lion. Um, I would probably rule out giraffe as well. I would guess the African African element el elephant. <laughs> um, yes. Okay, you know. African elephant is right. Well done. Let's see, Judith. In geometry, an acute angle is any angle of less than how many degrees? Is it 90, 180, or 360? Uh, that's 90. You sure? I'm fairly sure. Ninety's right. So back to you, Andy. Which of these is a bone in the human ear? Patella, malleus, or scaphoid? I know that the uh, patella is in the knee. I'm not too sure about the other two. I've heard of scaphoid, so I'll go. I'll go scaphoid. It gets help us here. Patella, where is that? Knee, 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 knee cap, as Andy said. Knee and scaphoid? I think it's in the wrist. The wrist? I think so. Malleus is the answer, Andy, sorry. OK. So a chance for Judith now to take the lead. The megatherium, which grew to a length of around six metres, is an extinct member of which animal family? Judith, is it the alligator, sloth or jaguar? Megatherium. The megatherium. Well, I mean... Uh... I'm thinking it must be a long, thin thing if it grew to a length of something. Um, so I, I think I'd go for alligator, which is a long, thin creature. Barry is looking as if he is in, has got a problem with indigestion or something. <laughs> Barry, what's happening? Uh, her megatherium is a giant sloth. It's a 
It's a giant sloth. Yes, it's quite a, <laughs> quite a, although it was six metres long, it's a very squat animal. It's, it's low and quite heavily built. I see. It's low and heavily built, Judith, but it is a sloth. All right, Andy, get this right, maybe Judith will start to tremble. In which US state did the Wright brothers achieve their first successful powered airplane flight in 1903? North Carolina, Louisiana, or Kansas? No, I don't know this one. I'm going to go for North Carolina. North Carolina is correct. Well done. OK, Judith, you need to get this one right. William C. Campbell, Satoshi Omura, and Yo-Yo Tu were awarded which Nobel Prize in 2015? Physics, chemistry, or physiology or medicine? I, I really don't know. I think, um, as there are three of them, team effort. Uh, maybe it's uh, physiology or medicine. I'm not even going to ask about the logic. You've got it right. It's physiology or medicine. Well done. So <laughs> level after three <laughs> questions, Andy. It is hard to throw them off, isn't it? it and is. we go to sudden death. It gets a bit harder. I don't give you alternatives. Here's your question. How many horns did the Triceratops dinosaur have on its face? I'm going to just have to, to go with uh, a clue in the, in the word, so I'll go for three. Yeah, the name translates to three-horned face, so three is correct. Judith, you need this to stay in. In particle physics, the abbreviation LHC stands for Large Hadron what? LHC? Yes. A collider. Collider's right. Level. Back to you, Andy. Astronauts from how many of NASA's 17 Apollo missions walked on the moon? Um, I wish I could name them all. That is a tough question. Complete guess out of 17, I would guess six. Dave, is he right? Yeah. Six is right. <laughs> 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 OK, Judith, if you get this wrong, you will be toast. What nationality was Hans Graham, creator of the Graham stain, a widely used microbiological staining technique that aids in the identification and characterization of bacteria? Hans Graham. I think he might have emigrated to Australia. So, I mean, America. So, he's going to be American. I... No. He didn't? No, he didn't. Where did he go? I don't know how to tell you this. He... <laughs> <laughs> Just straight out. Come out. The answer is Danish, out. and you've been knocked out, Judith. Oh. I'm sorry, Andy. Well done. Sudden death. You've beaten an egghead. And that's two eggheads down. Let's see what happens next. Please return to your teams. OK, game on. Over and out have not lost any brains so far. The eggheads are two down. They've lost two. They've lost Barry and Judith. What's going to happen next? Well, we have film and TV. So who loves their film? You want to go for this? And then... Do we go nuclear? <laughs> Who's going to do it? Totes will do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can do it. You're happy with that. And then... What? Well, Go big. Then. I'll be tempted to go big. OK. Yeah. Let's go, go big. big. Yeah. Go, Kevin. go yeah. big. Yeah. I think we're going to go Kevin. <laughs> ah. Mm. OK, so Toby, yeah? That's me, yeah. OK, yes. Toby from Over and Out is taking on Kevin from the Eggheads, as they say, going big. So please go to the question room now. OK, Toby, good luck to you. Film and TV against the great Kevin. Would you like to go first or second? I'll go first, please. Here we go. According to Forbes, who was the world's highest-paid actress between June 2015 and June 2016, with pre-tax earnings of $46 million. Is it Brie Larson, Jennifer Lawrence, or Anna Kendrick? I'm going to rule Anna Kendrick out. I'm going to go for Jennifer Lawrence. Yes, she tops a lot of lists. Jennifer Lawrence is the right answer. Well done. OK, Kevin. The internet sensation Carpool Karaoke, in which pop stars sing along to their songs while being driven round LA, was created by which chat show host? Jimmy Fallon, James Corden, or Jimmy Kimmel? Well, I haven't actually seen this, but I've... I have come across it. And I've got an idea that it's actually James Corden. I think, he, you know, having, having now made his career as a chat show host in the States, I think he does this. James Corden is right. Yes, yeah, done very well stateside. OK. 
level. Toby, for which organization does Jodie Foster's character work in the film The Silence of the Lambs? FBI, DEA, or CIA? Now, The Silence of the Lambs would have been released probably when I was still under the age of 10. I have since seen it, but I can't for the life of me remember what Jodie Foster's character did. Um, I'm going to go for the CIA. CIA teammates, we don't yeah, think so. FBI. I think it's FBI. FBI. Uh, it's FBI is the answer. OK, <sighs> so let's see whether our own Hannibal Lecter can come back here. Where is the TV drama series Red Rock set? Ireland, Wales or Scotland? That's not ringing any bells at all. If you haven't heard of it, it's, there's nothing to go on. I'll say Ireland. I, I, I simply have no idea. I don't know what it is. Ireland is the right answer. Oh. Third question, Toby. You need to get this one right. Andy Kane, best known by his nickname Handy Andy, gained fame on which TV show? It was Handy Andy on Changing Rooms, Ground Force, or DIY SOS? Now, that is a question that I should know the answer to. I'm going to go for DIY SOS because Andy, the handyman, is hopefully good at DIY. Changing rooms is the answer. Toby, so sorry. So, Kevin, you're in the final round. Maybe the eggheads are coming back now. Come back to us, return to your teams, and we will play one more round before that final. As it stands, over and out of lost a brain now from the final round. Toby's gone. The yeah, kids are still two down, so it's still looking rather interestingly poised. And the last subject before the final is sport. Uh, I'll have that, please. Johnny, OK, I know you're sports mad. Okay. Who do you want to take on? You can have Dave, Dave or Lisa. Uh, Lisa, please. OK, very good. Johnny from over and out. Briefly. And let's see if it's over and out for Lisa from the Eggheads on sport. Please go to the question room now. Johnny Sports versus the great Lisa. Would you like to go first or second? Uh, I'll go first, please, Jeremy. OK, here is your first question. Johnny, in gymnastics, how high is the balance beam above the floor? 1.25 metres, 2.25 metres, or 3.25? So, I think the balance beam, I actually... I actually don't even know that. The balance beam, I think, is the one... the one pole as such. Um, I'm trying to think about how they mount onto it, but it's not coming to me. Uh, I will guess at 2.25. I'm just trying to visualise. This is the one that's almost kind of solar plexus height or chest height. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's the, the one that the women do. So, um, you know, you've got these diddy little gymnasts, so we're sort of four foot six, you know, and they can, they can jump onto it. Some of them will use a springboard, but mostly they will mount without, so I think it must be 1.25. Yeah, 1.25, Johnny. OK, Lisa, which of these football teams played in the 2016-17 Premier League? Norwich City, Bournemouth or Aston Villa? <laughs> I knew it was going to be that end of the table, right? Um, that's Bournemouth. They're all quite tempting, aren't they? Bournemouth is right. So she's ahead, Johnny. Catch up now. Which of these countries won its first ever Olympic gold medal in 2016? St Lucia, Fiji or Madagascar? Uh, I hadn't heard of St Lucia or Madagascar winning a gold um, this time round, and I think with the Rugby Sevens being it the first time in the Olympics, it'll be Fiji. That's right, and I remember the pictures of them celebrating because they're so excited. Fiji's right, well done. OK, Lisa, your question now, chance to take the lead. Helen Glover, born in 1986, is a famous name in which sport? Rowing, cycling or swimming? This is Steve Bachtel. She goes by these days, I think, but with uh, Heather Stanning, she's a very successful rower. It's rowing. Rowing is correct. So she's ahead, and Johnny, you need to get this one right to stay in. In cricket, the shortest completed test match in history at Melbourne in 1932 lasted for how many balls? 256, 656, or 1056? I'm just trying to divide that by six. So 256 seems ridiculously short. 
656 is a 100 and bit overs, and then 1,056, obviously, getting near to doubling that. Um, I will go down the middle again with 656. You're right. Well done. You got two out of three. 656 <laughs> is the right answer. And that's, that would be an easy one to go wrong on. OK, Lisa, you still have the initiative here. If you get this right, you're in the final. Which capital city hosted its first Formula One Grand Prix in 2016? Zagreb, Moscow or Baku? I'm fairly sure, but let me just check. I don't think there is a Grand Prix in Croatia. And when they run the Russian Grand Prix, they run it out at Sochi. But yeah, I, I think they built a, a really quite scary street circuit in Baku. I think that's right. Yeah, Baku. Baku is the right answer, Lisa. Well done. So after three questions, you have beaten Johnny, who now goes out the game. And that means we're poised very equally for our final. Please come back to us and we'll play it. This is what we have been playing towards. It is time for the final round. As always, it's general knowledge, but I'm afraid those of you who lost your head-to-heads won't be allowed to take part in this round. So, Johnny and Toby from Over and Out, and also Barry and Judith from The Eggheads, would you please now leave the studio? OK, Andy S, Andy K, Nick, you're playing to win Over and Out £7,000. Good jackpot today. Lisa, Kevin and Dave, you're playing for the Egghead's pride. You're playing for the shirt, and you're playing to make sure this role continues. As usual, I will ask each team three questions in turn. This time, they're all general knowledge. You are allowed to confer. OK, so over and out. The question is, are your three brains better than these three over here? And can you do this without <laughs> dropping a catch? <laughs> do you want to go first or second? We'll go first, please. So general knowledge. Good luck, guys. Until. 1968, Namibia was known by what name? Southwest Africa, Northeast Africa, or Southeast Africa? First thing that sprung to mind was Southwest Africa. Yeah, because yeah. The South is quite near South Africa, I think, isn't it? Namibia. Namibia, I can't I mean, it was a section of South Africa. So. Okay. Like, for some reason, the first thing that sprung to mind was Southwest. I is think... Namibia that side of the. I think it's South Africa, and then Namibia is quite nearby, so it's. Yeah, is it down and left? I or... think so. Maybe it is. I mean, I'll bow to you. I, I don't know. I, we're not I can't sure. picture we it. We are guessing a little bit, aren't we? Yeah. You go for it, Southwest? I'd go Southwest. OK, without a great deal of confidence, Southwest Africa. Absolutely right. OK, Ed Kids, your question. Which underground line on the London tube map is silver grey? Is it Central, Jubilee, or district? Jubilee. 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 Yeah. Jubilee. Yeah. District yeah. is green, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 And then Central's, Central's red. Central's yeah. red, yeah. Yeah, so the Jubilee line, yeah? Yeah. yeah. We're happy with uh, the Jubilee line, please, Jeremy. Jubilee is quite right. One each. Back to our challenges. Who became the Secretary of State for exiting the European Union in July 2016? David Davis, Liam Fox, or Michael Fallon? I yeah. think it's David Davis. Not Liam Fox. Not Michael Fallon. Yeah, yeah. Sounds, sounds familiar. Yeah. Now you've mentioned yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, bowing to Andy S. Uh, go for David Davis, please. David Davis is right. Two out of two. Well done. Egghead's a little bit on the back foot here as we play for £7,000. In Norse mythology, how many legs did Odin's horse Sleipnir have? Two, eight, or twelve? Eight. OK. Eight. Eight, eight legs. Yeah. yeah. So you're happy with that, Lisa? Yeah. Eight legs. I'm, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Uh, Bowing to Kevin. Um, eight legs, please, Jeremy. Always a good idea to bow to Kevin. Eight is correct. <laughs> two two. Can't tell how this is going to go, but just get this one right, and it may be a case of sitting back and watching the batting collapse on the other side. <laughs> Work was a worldwide hit for which singer in 2016? Is this Katy Perry, Taylor Swift, or Rihanna? <laughs> Just looking at me. We're looking yeah, at you, Andy. <laughs> Work. Modern music, no idea. Oh, I think it's Katy Perry or Rihanna. A worldwide hit. Who's, fa who's big worldwide? Both they all are. All they are. all are. Big enough to have a worldwide hit. Katy Perry's been, busy. Katy Perry's been, been quite busy recently, hasn't she? Yeah. 2016. I think Katy Perry. 
Okay. Take this back. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Again, not overly confident, but we think it may be Katy Perry. Katy Perry is your answer. Now, I was at the Brits, strangely, in a seat so far up towards the ceiling, my nose was bleeding. And the artist came out and sang, work, 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 just says the word work, doesn't it? And I did momentarily pay attention, and it was not Katy Perry. It was Rihanna. It was Rihanna. So, Eggheads, your chance to take the contest with this. Florence Nightingale, featured on which Bank of England banknote? between 1975 and 1994. Was she on the fiver, tenner, or 20? It's a fiver. Mm. I thought it was 20, oh, God. No, it's not 20. It's not 20. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 was oh, the, 20. um... Right, let's just go. 20 was Shakespeare. Yeah. I think a tenner was the Duke of Wellington, and I think a fiver was Florence Nightingale. You, you... 50 pounds you was... You think Wellington was on the tenner? I thought he was on the fiver. <laughs> right, OK. Let's have a think about this. I assume we forget, don't we? Right, so... I thought Elizabeth Foy was on the fiver. Huh? Was that later? She, uh, she was, yeah. Oh, man. It's not... It's definitely not the 20. 20 is Shakespeare. Yeah, de definitely, definitely right. not the 20. It's either the 5 or the 10. Mm. And I can... Um, I can mean, see it, Wellington it, on it. it. Well, like, well, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure he was on the 5. Mm. But, of course, there have been different people on the 5 at different mm. times. And then the, I, ten, the tenor changed, didn't it? Yeah, I can't associate her with the fiver. But the tenor changed, didn't it? Yeah. Which is what might be confusing me, because remember the shape of the tenor? Yeah, and Darwin went on to the, on to the tenor. Yeah. I'm, I'm inclined to go with you. OK. If you can't, yeah. I don't, I don't I, think I, we're struggling. I'm inclined to go with the, the ten, because now, now I'm thinking yeah. about it. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, Wellington was there like that. And... I'm, I'm certain it's not the 20. So yeah, we, yeah. I think we'll, we can... rule that out. So and then Wellington was on the... Five, five, of, five yeah, there, and yeah. then Nightingale. Yeah. So we go. Should we go I, ten? I, I, I think ten, but it, it, <laughs> it, it may be one. It may be one. We'll give, we'll give it we, we've had one of our moments there. Well, probably I have. Um, but on balance, we're going to go for ten pound note, please, Jeremy. If you've got this right, the contest is over. You did start with five, and you shifted. Barry was getting very... You were getting very excited back there, Barry. Yes, I think it's a five. <laughs> oh, really? You think it's a five? Mm. It's lucky you're not in the final round, Barry, because the answer is ten pounds. You've got it right. We say congratulations, Eggheads. You have won. Hi, Kevin. <laughs> and they were all set to go five, and then there was a, just a little hang on, everyone, from Kevin. So, which does happen. He just pulled it back. Well done, well Kevin. Done, Kevin. <laughs> well done, Eggheads. Commiserations. Hope well, you enjoyed that. Great, great time. Thank, Thank you. you. They, they're good. They've done what comes naturally to them. Increasingly so. This winning streak gets more and more impressive. It does mean you're not going home with the £7,000, so we will take that money and roll it over to our next show. Eggheads, congratulations. Who will beat you? Join us next time to see if a new team of challengers can do it. £8,000 says they can't. Till we quiz again, goodbye. Welcome to Eggheads, the show where a team of five quiz challengers pit their wits against possibly the greatest quiz team in Britain. They are the Eggheads. No possibly about it, is there? No. <laughs> Eggs? Well, well, Come on. It's well. a dead set. Are you feeling the force? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Feel the Excellent. Force. Hoping to get one over on our quiz champions today are over and out. Now, this team are all members of St Albans Cricket Club. Let's meet them. Hi, I'm Andy. I'm the managing director of a PR company. I'm Nick, and I'm a chemistry teacher. Hi, I'm Johnny, and I'm a master's student in politics. Hi, I'm Andy. I'm a project and programme manager. I'm Toby, and I'm a data analyst. So, Andy, team, welcome. Great to see you. Hello. Hello. Hi. It's a cricket club that brings you together, Andy, is it? It is, yeah. We all play cricket together. And there's something about a drop catch in there. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm unfortunately the back-to-back -back, uh, uh, recipient of the Drop Catch of the Year award for St Albans Cricket Club. So they, they work out which was the one that you maybe should have collected? Uh, there wasn't much choice. I, think. <laughs> I, was, I, was a, I was a clear winner. <laughs> and how is it then, the cricket? Is it, is it very competitive or just leisurely or what? No, it's pretty competitive. We, we run five teams on a Saturday and two teams on a Sunday and we play league cricket, we play friendly cricket. So we've got a big youth section. We, you know, we really cover most bases when it comes to the, uh, to the cricket. And the two Andes have quizzed before here? Yeah, we've done a little bit of you know, pub quizzing before. Right, OK. Good luck. 
Every day there is a thousand pounds worth of cash up for grabs for our challengers. However, if they fail to defeat the eggheads, the prize money rolls over to the next show. So over and out, I can tell you that the eggheads are, I think we could call it a roll now, officially. They are on a roll. They've won six on the trot. That's good news for you in the sense that it means that £7,000 is on the table today. Bad news in, in good form, but let's not worry about that. You can take them down, I'm sure. Are you ready to try? We're ready, yeah. definitely. OK, Go. first head-to-head -head battle is on arts and books. <laughs> and you can choose from Judith, Dave, Kevin, Barry and Lisa. Arts and books. I would suggest, <laughs> books. I would suggest that you go for Barry <laughs> and you go for it. OK. Yeah. Yeah. Should we do that? Yeah. Can we help yeah, with okay, that? Okay. I think we're going to go for Barry. Yes. And I'm going to OK, the team captain, Andy, goes in. Answer books the subject, and it's Barry the Brain <laughs> who'll be in the question room as well. Please, gentlemen, go there now. Andy, I gather you had a really interesting musical job. Uh, well, I run a PR company now in the music industry, but for many years I worked in the record industry. I worked uh, throughout the 90s at Creation Records, Home of Oasis and Primal Scream and various other people. Great, so you saw Oasis come up in the, the incredible way that they did. I did, I fought the Britpop Wars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that was... There's been nothing like that probably since the... Oh, I was going to say the Beatles, but maybe T-Rex and all that would have been similar, but it's, it's unusual to have that level of hysteria, isn't it? Yeah, it was, it was quite a remarkable time, I think. I think they worked out at one point that one in 12 people in the country bought What's the Story, Morning Glory, their second album. It's a, it was a, an astonishing time. All right, good luck in this round, Andy. Arts and books and your choice. Do you want to go first or second? I'll go first. So here's your question, Andy. Good luck. Which of these novels is set during World War I? The Quiet American, Birdsong or Catch-22? Hmm. Well, it's not Catch-22, because that's uh, in the Second World War. Uh, the Quiet American, I don't know. I do know that the answer is Birdsong, which is set in the First World War. Birdsong is correct, yeah. Got a point. Over to Barry. How are you, Barry? Well, thank you. You're an Oasis fan? Yes, yes. I, uh, I, didn't, buy the, I didn't buy that album, though, but uh, <laughs> I've probably listened to every track on it many times. Yeah, it's good. Which Shakespeare character was the Prince of Tyre? Barry, was it Cymbeline, Pericles or Othello? Well, Othello was from Cyprus and Cymbeline was an English, a British king, so it was Pericles, Prince of Tyre. Pericles is right. One each. Back to you, Andy. Who is the central character of the E.M. Forster book, A Room with a View? Adela Quested, Margaret Schlegel or Lucy Honeychurch? I have to say I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm aware of the book. I haven't read it. Um... It's going to be a complete guess. I'm going to say uh, Lucy Honeychurch. <laughs> is he right, Barry? He's absolutely right. That's right. Lucy Honeychurch is the right answer, Andy. Well done. Going well. Two out of two for our challenger. Barry, how many lines are there in each verse of the Rudyard Kipling poem, if... Ooh. Two, four or eight? It's not two. It must be eight. Eight is correct. <laughs> <laughs> the sort of one you can come undone, undone on, isn't it? <laughs> it's easily that. Like. Yeah. <laughs> Andy, to increase the pressure on our egghead, and let's see if that shell gives way. Who painted New Coucher, or Reclining Nude, which was sold for $170 million in 2015? Is this is Pietro Anigoni, Amadeo Modigliani, or Giacomo Balla? The only one I've heard of is Modigliani. Um, I don't know the other two. I'm going to say Modigliani. Wouldn't he be amazed if he knew his work had gone for that amount of money? I always think Modigliani is the right answer. Well done. Amadeo Modigliani, three out of three. OK, they've started very well. Let's see if Barry can stay in there. Your question. Which Stephen Karam play, set in a New York apartment, won the 2016 Tony Award for Best Play? Barry, was it The Humans, Eclipsed or The Father? Ah, uh, I miss this. I really don't know on this one at all. I'm sorry to say I haven't heard of any of those plays, so it's going to be an absolute guess. I'll go for The Father. The Father. Let's see if challenges, do you know? 
with no. humans is the only thing that yeah andy right. andy's got it on on this side the humans is the answer oh. barry <laughs> well done andy that's good good stroke for your team that's not a drop catch at all there is it oh, I'm, I'm you're thrilled. going to be in the final <laughs> round you've knocked out barry the brain please come back to us and we'll see what the next round holds we had a, an interesting passing reference to Othello in that round. And Barry, you said he was from Cyprus. Yes, I, I might have got that wrong. The, the play is set in Cyprus, but the subtitle of the play is Othello, Moor of Venice. The so Moor it might of... well be Venetian. Yes, that's right. So there's the Moor of Venice and it's set in Cyprus. So there's all kinds of different, different things going on there. As it stands, over and out, have not lost the brain. Done really well here. The eggheads have lost Barry. And the next subject for you is science. Who would like this? I think that's you, Andy, me. Isn't yeah, it? sure. Yeah, I think that's, that's going to be me, Jeremy. Okay, Andy, against which egghead, and it can't be Barry. Judith. Um, Judith, please. Okay, very good. You like your science? Quite. If it's birds and bees, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, botany rather than the periodic table. Oh, oh, the periodic table. Yes, my nemesis, that is. <laughs> so Andy from Over and Out is playing Judith on science from the eggheads. Please now go to our legendary question room. Well, Judith, it is very wide science, isn't it? A huge, yes. I we go stars from the and... birds and the bees to stars. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, there we are, Andy. Would you like to go first or second on science? Uh, first, please, Jeremy. And here we go. Which of these animals often live for more than 50 years in the wild? Lion, African elephant or giraffe? Um... I don't think it's a lion. Um, I would probably rule out giraffe as well. I would guess the African African element ele elephant. <laughs> um, yes. Okay, African, African, African elephant. elephant is right. Well done. Let's see, Judith. In geometry, an acute angle is any 